Hey guys, <laughs> it's me again. Happy Halloween! I hope you guys have a great Halloween weekend. Uh, we've gone a little bit crazy, but you know, <laughs> still recovering. Um, today we're gonna talk about something easy, but I think it's something that people are gonna use. Oh, sorry, I gotta introduce myself first. My name is Jo Rowan Huang. I am a it's so funny, eh? I didn't even drink and I feel like I have a hangover for some reason. But anyway, um, let's do it properly. My name is Rowan Huang. I'm an author, spirit coach, and also a psychic. Today, I want to talk about feng shui with you guys. I mean, I think it's a new turn in Western and then, you know, but it's something that we, we grow up with things we were kids, right? So. In Asia, feng shui is basically um, describing um, how your house can position, how you can put the furniture in a certain way that would gain you some luck, or you know, uh, how you would bring you better luck on you know all area. So in Taiwan, they they can be really professional about this. They can they can actually come up with a measurement. Thing. They will tell you specifically what to put using the element that we talked about before. If your house is a leg of you know, water element, they will suggest you to put more water so you can keep that, you know, um, supposed to stimulate the, the flow, the energy flow in your house in a way that will benefit you. So, um, which I kind of agree, but I kind of... Um, Kind of do and kind of don't <laughs> because you know when at the beginning of the stage I too am like every other people right because I like to try I like to try things out since feng shui takes such a big part in Asia I I sure would like to test it out and see if it really work later on in the study I realized that uh, there's a lot of things that actually uh, come together with it other than just how you position your furniture. There's a lot to do with uh, the power of thought too, which we talked about in uh, last week. So this today, I'm just gonna explain very basic feng shui that like everybody can um, try out at home without professional. I mean, sure, if you wanna get really detailed about it, there's always specialists out there you can hire to go through your house and tell you how you can decorate your house properly. <laughs> But, you know, then again, in my mind, I think there's a lot to do with power of thought, how people think and how people, what people believe too. So today, let's explain feng shui. Feng shui um, is actually two words in Chinese. One means wind, feng means wind in Chinese, shui means water. So, you know, I'm just curious if people ever curious, uh, ever wondering why bring luck to the house have to be named wind and water because i do <laughs> i i'm just curious right i'm curious to know why those two were uh you know simple uh symbolize the luck of the family so you know it's not until later on the stage when i actually get introduced to the element of earth and things like that and able to see how energy flow i start to understand why feng shui means feng shui so feng shui is basically the energy that flow in your house, right? So if you want to know your house got good flow of the energy, the best way is to put yourself as a wing or water, pos water position. Imagine yourself as wind. Imagine yourself as water. When you first walk into the house and then you flow through every room, it see give you a smooth flow, right? The chances if you go into a house and it give you a smooth flow that you don't have so much clutter, don't have things that's in your way. You know how sometimes we walk around the house and something's always in our way. We always trip. We always, you know, think the chances you better want to move that thing because you you imagine yourself as <clears throat> wind or water, right? So what you want to create here is actually create a smooth flow, smooth flow in your house. Like every area seems very, you know, clear and then, you know, try to flow through 
every part of your house, imagine yourself as、uh, wind and water. Does it fl- flow smoothly? Does it does it go? You know, is it too cluttery or is it too things like that that will actually、um, influence how how your how do you call it? the energy flow that will influence your personal. Energy flow as well as you're personally living there, right? Because understand, this is our nest. We create a nest mostly because we want to come come back in here and rejuvenate ourselves. That we may have a hard day, we may have a busy day or a busy life, but your nest is supposed to make you recharge yourself. So now, when you're coming back home, you want to make sure this flow and things like that is actually able to relax you, right? So. When I realize I focusing on that, then you will realize, you know, in order to get a balance, you got balance out little everything, right? So, so when we talk about the the elements of earth, right? You going through your house, you have. You you first you clean the clutter. First you make the furniture in a way so it flow better, so you're not always tripping over something. Then you start to analyze: Is it too dark? If it's too dark, then you can actually use some light to stimulate light energy. It, it, does it need some green? Right. You you what you try to do is you try to create some kind of harmony and balance. That's almost similar to your body, right? Our body is majority water, and then we got you know some mineral, some you know some light energy, some of those energy, right? So what do you want to do is you try to create that balance that almost similar to your human body. So in that way, you most like to create a very comfortable living space, even though you may be a little messy there or. Or you know, I'm not telling you to create a spotless house, right? But but it would be organizing a way that you most likely would feel comfortable when you come home. So you're not feeling, oh my god, I'm, I don't know why every time you come back home I'm feeling stressed because the truth is that's your nest. And in Chinese, I'm gonna also based a ton of that. I'm giving you a very A general idea, like how you can focus. If you cannot clean the whole house, there's certain area you can look into it, and you can really try to start from there. So in Asia,、um, every room, every room of the house, uh, uh, kind of work on certain part of your energy. It's like you know, if our head work on certain thing, our heart work on certain thing, our stomach work on certain thing. When you create a home, it will actually work that way as well. So, what I try to do here is let's break it to three part. That's very simple. So, one is living room. Living room is where family usually gather. Nowadays, you got living room and family room, right? So, it would it would be、uh, depends on which room you your family spend the most time in. If your family spend the most time in the family room, then I would consider family room is your major living room. So, but if your your family spend more time in the proper living room, then the energy of the living room would be more important. So, in in Asia, living room is in charge of this family's luck. That that luck is you know. I don't know what other way to describe luck, but luck is you know how how you feel things are going a little bit smoother for you, and you know how oh you're lucky you got that, you know things go things energy outside seems to flow a little bit more smoother for you instead of always fight against you. If you want to improve that area, then I will, as I say, focusing on that room, try to make it make sure that it flow for it flow well. Not so much clutter, and then got enough light or enough, you know, plant to keep the air circulated or, you know, fresh air. So that will most likely improve、um, the flow of things. It might take some time, as I say. Everything you work, it's not gonna work next day, since all human body is really consistent. You know, feed by energy, right? So it will eventually get better. But if you're focusing on that. It will most likely make things go a little bit smoother for you in the day to day, day in day out life, right? Then the second thing you you want to focus, which a lot of people do, is a、uh, bedroom. We spend majority of time in our bedroom. We probably don't know, but we do.、Um, you know, average people spend eight hours because they have to sleep, right? 
So what bedroom is char in charge is your health, right? So in Asia, we really focusing on the bedroom because we, we watch out if there's anything above our bed, if you know there's anything that will stop the energy from flowing clearly. We make sure there's no clutter under the bed because we want air to be able to pass through and things like that. So um, again, as I say, imagine yourself as a wing and water, walk around the bedroom, remove the thing that you think is often in your way, right? That you trip over, you hit it, you, you know, knock yourself silly or something like that. The thing is you probably wanna remove that thing from your bedroom. Again, bedroom is where you sleep, it matters your health. If you can keep it, you know, comfortable. <laughs> if you walk in, you feel comfortable. Like what do you do is you open your door and then you walk in and see what feeling that give it to you. Oh, another incident again. <laughs> so so um, the chances that's how it will recharge you next day too. The other thing, the, another important space that in Asia is <laughs> mine is a kitchen. Kitchens actually uh, influence your wealth. That's why Asians always like to stock a lot of food. We always want to make sure we got leftover. That's based on the understanding we want to have leftover wealth, right? So the the flow, when you go through the flow of the kitchen, what I always notice is I, I find a lot of stuff going on, a lot of stuff going on in the kitchen, right? There's a lot of thing. If you go to Japanese house, there's a lot of clutter sometimes too, even on the kitchen counter, things like that. So. For you understand the energy that kitchen control is actually your wealth. So if you are able to keep it, um, I would not even say empty. <laughs> empty is not even a good way. But you know, you know that feeling when you go go to inside the kitchen and then you feel, you know, like harvest type of feeling. I don't know if you, you guys know what it meant, but the feeling that make you feel like you know, like fall coming in and then you feel richness, you feel that wealth in the air. That That's basically the feeling you want to create for your kitchen because that that is tying together with your with your wealth. So I, I actually at this point, based on observation, I, I can only explain why. Um, like I can only explain how it tying to your luck I cannot, I have some idea, but I'm not quite, you know, I heard certain telling you why your energy tying to the space like that. But I think that have a lot to do with, you know, how our human or soul function. So that's why this area are significant or how you, you know, work together with part of our, you know, energy flow. But anyway, so Feng Shui, I can talk forever, but we're not going there. Uh, we're just going to give you a very basic idea of Feng Shui. Feng Shui basically means wind and water. So doing a quick rerun, <laughs> a recap, um, if you guys are interested in this, have a quick run through through your house. Imagine yourself as, you know, wind and water. When you flow through this house, it's a flow nicely. If you flow nicely, the chances you already got a good start. Right. When when that good start, then great. The next thing you have to do is check. You can check every room's light, and then you know, look around and see if you need a plan to give it that aliveness. Right. That will also help. And then you know, if you want to start with something, there are three things you can always start. One is luck, one is health, and one is wealth. So pick one. You know, you don't have to go clean the whole house. Sometimes it's very overwhelming. So what I do is I will you know start with a room that where in this moment what should I focusing on right and then I'll start with that room and that would be a good start and then same thing as I always tell because you understand how bedroom represent our health right so whenever I see my kids room is very messy I will always say uh, your room represent what your um, my is right now. So if your my is your room is very messy, the chances your your internally are a little bit messy as well. So it seems you don't know where you can start from inside. I always recommend clients start from outside. So once you actually start cleaning up your room, 
your soul will somehow just have to work with that. You know what I mean? So if you allow yourself to live in a messy room, that is to say you are neglecting your issue. You are not dealing with it. And then you, that will only get, get worse if you continue neglecting it. So the best way to do it, if you start to notice, you know, everybody's different. They might go through difficult time. They might go through different period of time. But if you can physically realize your room is start to get a little bit messy, remember that represent what you are inside right now. So start picking up something. Once you start picking it up, you will be amazed how you were, you were internally are actually res responding to your action as well. So anyway, that's some tip for you guys. I hope that can give you guys some idea, just a little bit idea how feng shui work. And okay, that's the topic of the day. I already used up 15 minutes, but I hope I give you guys some idea. Again, if you guys are interested in what I'm doing, join us in Periscope or, you know, go to my Facebook and follow me or subscribe me on my YouTube or even go to my website, ruowen.com. That I sometimes got to write up there. So today I will talk about feng shui. Today, this week I decided I'm just going to talk about all those, you know, conceptual things. <laughs> so tomorrow we're going to talk about qi. So till then, I guess I'll see you guys tomorrow. Bye.